We're calling to order the 950 Ways and Means and Consumer Commerce and Consumer Protection Committee. Uh, first item is SB 1590. Recommendation is to pass as is. And we'll let the committee report reflect DOA's request for one FTE and uh, $1 million. Any discussion? Not sure if we'll say. Okay, SB 1590 passed an amended um, Trey Volzai, Vice Chair Volzai, Senator Aquino, excuse, Senator DeCoy, aye. Senator Hashimoto, excused, Senator Inoue, aye. Senator Kunuha, aye. Senator Kidani, aye. Senator Kim, excused, Senator Lee, aye. Senator Shimabukuro, excused, Senator Wakai, yes. Senator Favela. Yes. His recommendation adopted. So many people excuse that, but it's uh, CPN, same yeah. recommendation, passing on amended chair votes. Thank you. Yeah. Vice Chair also votes aye. Senator McKelvey is excused. Senator Richards. All right. Senator Owa. All right. Thank you. Uh, next measure is SB 2106 relating to value added production. The recommendation is to pass with uh, several amendments that were submitted by the Department of Health around uh, replacing a permitting requirement with registration and um, requiring accredited food safety manager certification, uh, education and examinations. We'll also defect effective date to July 1, 2040, and there are technical non-substantive amendments. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, Chair votes aye. Thank you. Are the CPM members present? Are there any board no. with reservations or objections? Hearing none, measures adopted. Thank you. Ways and means same recommendation. Okay, SB 2106, all members present. Anyone voting no? Anyone voting with reservation? Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. Next measure, SB 2122 SD1 relating to energy efficiency portfolio standard. The recommendation is okay. to Pass on amended. Any discussion? Seeing none, Chair votes aye. Thank you. Of the CPN members present, any voting with reservations or objections? Seeing none, measures adopted. Ways and means, same recommendation. SB 2122, all members present. Anyone voting yes? Um, no. <laughs> with reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Next measure is SB 2503, SD1 relating to equity. Uh, the recommendation is to Pass with amendments will defect the effective date to July 1, 2040, and there are technical non-substantive amendments. Any discussion? Seeing none, Chair votes aye. Thank you. Up from CPM members present. Any objections, reservations, hearing none, measures adopted. What does that mean? Same recommendation. Okay. Senate Bill 2503, uh, pass with amendments. Anyone voting no with reservation, recommendation adopted. Uh, thank you very much. Next measure is SB. 2605 SD1 relating to healthcare. The recommendation is to pass with amendments. We will adopt the insurance commissioner and Kaiser Permanente's submitted amendments in the testimony. There are also some technical non-substantive amendments. Any discussion? Seeing none, passing with amendments. Chair votes aye. Thank you. Of the CPM members present, any reservations, objections? Oh. None? Sorry, thank you, Senator Awa. Objections? Is that a no vote? A no vote. Thank you. Ways and means same recommendation. Senate Bill 2605, passed with amendments. Anyone voting no? Anyone no vote for me, please. Okay. No. Bella, anyone voting with reservation? Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you very much. Next measure is SB 2673, SD1. Uh, the recommendation is to pass this unamended. Any discussion? Seeing none, Chair votes aye. Thank you. Of the CPN members present, any reservations, objections? Hearing none, measures adopted. Ways and means, same recommendation. SB 2673 passed with unamended. Anyone voting no? Anyone with reservation and recommendations? Thank you. Thank you very much. Next measure is SB 3220 SD1 relating to motor carriers. The recommendation is to pass with amendments, uh, technical and non substantive in nature. Any discussion? Seeing none, Chair votes aye. Thank you. Of the members present, any objections, reservations, hearing none, measures adopted. Thank you. What does it mean, same recommendation? 
Uh, all members present, anyone voting no, anyone with reservation, recommendation adopted. Uh, thank you very much. The next measure is SB 3316 relating to pesticides. The recommendation on this measure is to uh, pass with amendments. We will adopt a proposed amendment submitted in the testimony by Sugarland Farms, which changed the monthly reporting to quarterly and remove references to specific site information, including commodity or crop information. We will also defect the effective date on this measure to July 1, 2040 to further discussion. Any, any comments or questions? Senator Richard. Thank you, Chair, and I appreciate the the amendments coming forth. I'll be voting with reservations because I do want to continue this conversation. I, I understand the intent, but I think we've got to be mindful of little businesses. Thank you. So noted. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, Vice Chair passing with amendments. Chair votes aye. Thank you. Vice Chair also votes aye. Senator Richards. Uh, with reservations. With reservations. Okay. Senator Awal. Aye. The measures are back, Ways and means, same recommendation. SB 3316, all members present, anyone voting no, anyone with reservation? Who's that? Okay. Okay. okay, recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. The last measure on the agenda is SB 3335 SD1 relating to cannabis. Uh, with indulgence of the committee, the joint committees, and without objection, I would like to summarize the recommended amendments because there are, are uh, a lot of them. They have been provided in a memo to each of the members at the table right now. So if I can just briefly read, uh, we are making several amendments in three key areas to the measure. First, regarding hemp, we are acknowledging certain distinctions between hemp and cannabis by amending the bill uh, to more closely align to HB 1359 that was passed by the legislature last year, we will make changes to the preamble. We will rename the Authority Control Board and Implementation Board the Hawaii Hemp and Cannabis Authority. Uh, we will add a grant program, modify numerous provisions relating to definitions, requirements, and the composition of the board membership to more uh, effectively reflect the uh, concerns of the hemp community. So I'd like to thank the Department of Health, their council, and uh, the hemp farmers for trying to find a way forward on this. There's still a lot more work to do. The second is regarding criminal justice and rehabilitation. We're amending the bill to allow individuals uh, who have previously been convicted of a felony where probation, incarceration, or supervised release has been completed over 10 years ago to apply for licenses and employment with license operators. Uh, we're also amending the bill to disallow penalties for actions allowed under the new law uh, and to legalize the possession and distribution of cannabis paraphernalia, which are already uh, legal. So they're conforming amendments to existing changes that the legislature has made. Uh, and the last is uh, the department uh, regarding the Department of Health. We're amending the bill to clarify that the department's responsibilities regarding complaints about odors uh, stemming from cannabis cultivation or use. And I like to note there's a effective oh we are also blanking out the appropriation amounts and the position amounts in the bill uh to reflect the ongoing discussion going on at the legislature right now and and again noting there's a defective date on this measure uh, any discussion sure i, I don't like it. Uh, senator richards yeah thank you i i, I want to <clears throat> first of all compliment CPN for working very diligently on this with the hemp farmers as well as the cannabis people, Department of Health, um, and the AG's office to get this through. Um, I think we're really close. Uh, I'm going to be supporting with reservations just because I think we still got a little bit of tweaking to do, but I think we're close. So thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. Senator Moore, yeah. I, I still have concerns um, about um, the cannabis. Uh, we'd have the medical cannabis and we still haven't stood up the procedures and the programs. Uh, so so having this move into um, the pleasure um, cannabis um, gives me concern. We see a lot of problems in the community. Uh, right now, if we're inducing and be more restrictive in terms of alcohol use, um, I see this as kind of counter to that, so I, I'm going to vote no. So noted. Question? Uh, similar comments as uh, Senator Richards' reservations. Thank you. So noted. Any other? 
So, yeah, I guess the um, concern is uh, Senator Milwaukee because we have no parameters really on how um, this is going to be moving. And you guys all know I support him. But uh, with this uh, cannabis pleasuring thing, I, I, I cannot support the bill. Thank you, Chair. So noted. There is no other discussion. Vice Chair passing with amendments. Chair votes aye. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair. Votes with reservations. Senator McKelvey is excused. Senator Richards. Reservations. Senator Awa. Aye. Thank you. Measures adopted. Thank you. Ways and means, same, same recommendation. SB 3335, uh, Chair. Aye. Uh, Vice Chair votes no. Um, Senator Kino. Reservations. Reservations. Senator DeCoy. Reservations. Senator Hashimoto. Aye. Senator Inoue. No. Hard to see. Senator Kanuha. Aye. Senator Kidani. No. Senator Kim. Aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Shimabuko, excuse. Senator Wakai. No. Senator Favela. No. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Five. Only one, two, two. Yeah. Okay, adopted. Okay, recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. <laughs> I guess the gentleman. Hey, somebody sir. really wanted to kill them. <laughs> okay, let's get out of here. Okay. okay, we're going to adjourn and then we're going to go into the 950. Okay, going to order the 950 agenda. Okay, this is SB 3381. The chair is going to recommend that we uh, pass with amendments. And having practical courage, we're going to adopt the Office of Elections Testimony by amending HRS 12-6A by including the Lele Community District Board as one of the applicable offices. Amending HRS 12-6B to clarify the filing deadline being extended by 10 days if there are not sufficient candidates. Amending subsection C on page 16, lines 12 through 16 to clarify that a candidate must reside within the Lele Community District. Amending HRS 12-5 to reflect how many signatures will be required on the nomination papers for candidates for the Lele Community District. We'll also be amending HRS 11-357 and a section four to read a candidate seeking nomination or election to a two-year office for a community board as defined in HRS 206E or to candidate committee in an aggregate amount greater than $100 during an election period. Clarifying that the eminent domain powers can only be utilized to achieve the community master plan. So this would allow the members to run for the community board and the max donation they could receive in a two-year period would be $100. And then we'll let the, com the committee re report reflect that uh, the powers of eminent domain can only be used for greater public purposes and must be consistent with the community plan set forward by the board that the community board is a model for local self-governance to ensure that the future of places like Lahaina is controlled by members of the community for the community, that the intention of the community board is a path for self-determination by the Lahaina community, that the community board in designing the master plan for the Lele community should integrate the West Maui County plan, that the community board should establish rules for receiving community input and feedback as soon as practical, to ensure that community voice is heard and accounted for, that the amendments that will restrict campaign donations to the candidate are intended to encourage grassroots and community participation, and that access to public financing can become an option should HRS be further amended to include candidates of a community board, that the Lele Community District may need to be expanded to include communities in North Lahaina, and that this could be a model for all of our towns throughout Hawaii. Any any discussion? Just just a, a clarification. I know that the Office of Elections had said that we needed to have the number of um, members for the board, but I don't know if we want to include that now or have that. Yeah. So the that's yeah. what we took from Office of Elections. Oh, you did. Okay.
just to be clear. I just I just wanted to thank you, uh, Chair and the committee, for working hard on this. I know we talked about it when we was in the high now, and to see it moving forward, I really appreciate all your hard work, your staff, and the committee members. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? I just want to thank the subject matter chair too for all her hard work. Thank you. Okay, it's not chair vote. Um, SB three three eight one passed with amendments. All members present and voting no. Anyone with reservation? Recommendation adopt. Thank you. So still, she... we're going to adjourn that agenda yes, and start the nine fifty five ways and means agenda. Yep. Okay, first item is SB 2044. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt DOTEC's testimony to add a definition for fair market value. Any discussion? If not, chair votes aye. Okay, SB 2044, all members present. Anyone voting no? Anyone with reservation? Recommendation. Thank you. Next item, SB 2079, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not chair votes aye. Okay, SB 2079, all members pass with, with uh, unamended. All members present. Anyone voting no? With reservation? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2081, recommendation is to pass with amendments, removing section three and four. Any discussion? Not chair both side. SB 2081, all members present, anyone voting no with reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, 2107, recommendation is to pass with amendments, effecting the date to 2050. Any discussion? Not chair both side. A, SB 2107, all members present. Anyone with no vote? Anyone with reservation? Recommendations adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2170, recommendation is to pass with amendments. I'm sorry, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not sure what's up. A, SB 2170, to pass unamended. Anyone voting no? Anyone with reservation? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2182, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not sure about that. SB 2182, all members pass with unamended. Anyone, anyone, anyone voting no or with reservation? Okay, recommendation is that. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2305, recommendation is to pass with amendments, blanking the appropriation. Any discussion? 2205. Okay, going back to SB 2305, recommendation is to pass with amendments, blanking the appropriation. Any discussion? If not, Chair votes aye. Okay, all members present, anyone voting no, anyone to reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2337, recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopting LRB tech amendments, inserting a sunset clause for June 30, 2028, and defecting the date to 2050. Any discussions? Not sure what's that. Members present, anyone voting no with reservation? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2497. Recommendation is to pass with amendments. And we'll adopt amendments from DOTAX's testimony that includes PACMAR technologies and also include language from PacMars Technologies testimony to remove including affiliates on page 297. Any discussion? Not sure what's that. Okay, SB 2497, everyone present, no, anyone voting no, anyone with reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you, next item, SB 2527, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Yeah. 
2527 passed and amended. Anyone voting no with reservation and recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2523, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not cheerful, sir. SB 2553, pass and amended. Anyone voting no with reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2659, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not SB 2659, all members present, um, passed and amended, all members present, voting no, anyone voting with reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2726, recommendation is to pass with amendments, effective date to 25th. Any discussion? Not SB 2726, passed with amendments, all members present, anyone voting no, with reservation, Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2728. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, effective date to 25th. Any discussion? Not sure. SB 2728, passed with amendments. All members present. Anyone voting no with reservation? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2764. Recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not sure both sides. SB 2764, pass and amended. All members present. Anyone voting no with re reservation? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2768, recommendation. No. 2768. The next item, SB 2768, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not sure both sides. SB 2768, pass an amendment, all men, members present, vote, anyone voting no, anyone with reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2770, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not sure both sides. Okay, 20, SB 2770, pass unamended. Yeah. Unamended, all members present, anyone voting? No, any reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2814, recommendation is to pass with amendments, blank the appropriation, effective date to 25th. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. SB 2814, pass with amendments, all members present, anyone voting no, anyone with reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 2817, recommendation is to pass with amendments, blank the appropriation, effective date to 25th. Any discussion? Not sure SB 2817, all members um, to pass with, what did you say? Sorry. Pass with amendments. Yes. Okay. Pass with amendments, all members present, anyone voting no, anyone with reservations, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 3002, recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, effective date to 20. Any discussion? <coughs> Not sure both sides. SB 3002 to pass with amendments. All members present. Anyone voting no with reservation? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 3021. Recommendation is to pass with amendments. Adopt LRB tech amendments. Effective date to 2015. Any discussion? Not sure what side. All members present. Anyone voting no? Anyone with reservation? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 3060. Recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not terrible sign. SB 3060, pass on amended. All members present. Anyone voting no with reservation? Recommendation adopted. I'm going to move this uh, SB 3068 to end the calendar. Next item, SB 3094. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, thanking the appropriations. Any discussion? Not 
Discussion. Not sure what side. It's Pat, uh, SB 3094 passed with amendments. All members present. Anyone voting no? Anyone with reservation? Recommendation adopted. Your next item, SB 3099, recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, make the appropriation. Any discussion? Okay. Not sure about that. SB 3099, all members pass with amendments, all members present, anyone voting no, anyone with reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 3109, recommendation is to pass with amendments, effecting the date to 2015. Any discussion? Not sure about that. SB 3109, passed with amendments. All members present, anyone voting no, anyone with reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 3126, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not sure about that. Okay. SB 3126, pass unamended. Anyone voting no, anyone with reservation? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 3157. Recommendation is to pass with amendments. Getting prior concurrence, adopting LRB tech amendments, adding new language to B on page two, line one, that reads disposition of public lands, which do not qualify under section A, and adding a new provision to B on page three that requires approval from the Board of Land and Natural Resources and effecting the date to July 1st, 2024. Any discussion? Not sure. SB 3157 passed with amendments. All present, anyone voting no? Anyone with reservations? No. No for Fabella. All others. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 3265. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, blank the appropriation, and will also include fashion and music production as allowable expenses that are eligible for the tax credit, blanking the dollar amount for the tax credit, and effecting the date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure about second. SB 3265, all members present. Anyone voting no? Anyone with reservations? Recommendation adopted. Your next item, SB 3360, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not sure about second. SB 3360, pass unamended. Anyone voting no? Reservation. Reservation for Lokai. Anyone else? Uh, anyone voting no or reservation? Okay, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, SB 3361. Recommendation. 3361. Oh. No? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? If, if not, chair moves out. SB 3361, all members present, uh, to pass an amendment, all members present, anyone voting no with reservation, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Okay, going back to SB 3368. 3068. Okay, so we have quite a number of amendments. So the whole purpose of this bill that was part of the admin package was to consolidate all the Maui fire response budget requests into one bill. So the Senate position will be to move this bill forward and not have these items in the budget. So we're adding additional items that uh, were identified that should be in this bill versus the budget. And we're also going to include uh, some monies for infrastructure that uh, Senator Hashimoto and Senator Moriwaki have identified that if we if we invest in those specific infrastructure projects, they could get housing up faster, which means it could reduce the time that we have people in NCS. So I'll read the amendments. And then if we have questions, the, the budget director is here. So that's why I saved it to the last. <laughs> okay. So uh, recommendation will be to uh, passed with amendments, adopting HHS, HHFDC's testimony to amend the amount of $30 million 
to 230 million on page line, page nine, line five, adopting DCCA's language to add a $900,000 appropriation in fiscal year 25 for the Division of Consumer Advocacy. Oh, sorry. Okay, and HHFTC's 230 was 950. Appro appropriate 63 million 560 thousand in geo bonds reimbursable to the county of Maui through sub 41 for the following 4 million 560 thousand for a final disposition site 11 million for wastewater collection system repairs 9 million for wastewater collection system laterals and cleanouts 3 million for traffic signal replacement 10 million for fire flow improvements to water systems, 10 million for water supply infrastructure repairs and replacements, 8 million for storm drainage, flood control and water control improvements, 8 million for roadway connectivity and for disaster evacuation, um, appro also appropriating 40 million in ge geo bonds uh, reimbursable to HHFDC in fiscal year 25, for plan, design, construction, acquisition, and equipment for infrastructure for temporary housing in West Maui and 75 million in general obligation bonds reimbursable <laughs> to HHFDC in fiscal year 25 for plans, design, construction, acquisition, and equipment for modular housing for temporary units in West Maui and affecting the date to 2050. So the reimbursable is so that if FEMA is able to reimburse that the state gets it's the uh, money. Are we talking about the entire amount? No. So this is uh, on FEMA's contribution. Some some may be a, re a reimbursement from FEMA. We're not sure what they're going to be able to reimburse. So that's where we're defecting the data as well. Okay. But what portion would be reimbursed? Percentage? What portion would be reimbursed? The entire amount? We can ask them, the budget director. Yeah. So the question is of what's going to be in the geo bond reimbursable? What's the percentage that's going to get reimbursed? We would take the full amount of whatever the federal government would be re uh, returning to us, which based upon our initial projection could be about 90% of the cost. Okay, so it wouldn't be so much for us and so much for the county of Maui. And we would get the whole thing. No, we are upfronting the money in anticipation that we would get the full reimbursement from whatever comes back from the federal government. So, so the total amount is 186 million. <clears throat> no, so the, that's the initial bill, right? So it's we're good. adding we're adding to so the, this one the total. What is the total amount? So the okay, we we we'll, we'll add up the CIP and then we'll add additional monies from the operating. So this is like from their 400 million ass. Yeah, so from their $400 million ask, and that's what they provided yesterday, um, these are items that were identified to seem to be more, to be important so that we can get people from help. And so the total would Yeah, so they're going to come. None. No, plus the 40 and 75. So it's still less than the 400. Yeah, if we can get a total of everything. We can get that. Can you guys have that? Okay, so we'll also be including in the committee report that um, 200 million that was transferred into the major disaster fund in fiscal year 24 will be spent or obligated prior to the end of the fiscal year. So what we're trying to do with the committee report is ascertain all the items that were spent for recovery in the current fiscal year. So when people see the, the bill and the, the committee report, they can see what was spent in the current fiscal year in the committee report and in the bill what should be, what's being asked to be spent in fiscal year 25. And then we'll also have in the committee report some future asks that we already, that were already identified for years 26 and 27. So you, that way, hopefully people can see a a bigger picture of where this is headed. Uh, Chair, I have a question. Um, are we anticipating any other entities to reimburse us besides FEMA? I don't know. Is somebody from no. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, to your question, uh, Senator, good question. Uh, we are the administration is working with uh with philanthropic organizations uh within the state uh to make contributions to the housing plan going forward. So I do not have the exact details of how much they will be giving, but there is already discussions on board with with them contributing to these housing plans going forward. Uh, my question really is more specific to reimbursements that others may be required to pay that are involved in the lawsuit that that FEMA is not reimbursing for. Okay. If if it has to do with the lawsuit, uh, uh, Senator, I would defer to the Attorney General's office to answer any of those questions. Uh, I'm not in a position to answer that. And he left. Attorney think. General's office here. Okay. Yeah, I guess my All concern right. is is that we're only saying FEMA in the bill, but there could be others. No, 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 no. We're not saying FEMA. We're saying Giovanni and Bristol. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Um, I'm also going to add in the coming report that the administration projects to spend an additional $400 million in fiscal year 24 to address ongoing costs to the WAF fire response, primarily covering non-congregate sheltering costs, bringing the state's total to a total obligation to 600 million. <clears throat> that the 600 million total does not include 65 million to pay for settlements through the Wanohana Fund. That the costs for fiscal year 25 to 27 are still unclear as a temporary and permanent housing plan has not been presented to the legislature and may result in additional non-congregate shelter expenses. That the lapse date of any funds deposited into the major disaster fund may require an extended lapse date to meet the ongoing cash flow needs and expenses. Uh, these undetermined costs could potentially decrease the state's carry, carry over balance from fiscal year 25 to critically low levels that impacts the state's six-year financial plan. That the $178.5 million appropriated in CIP will be used for infrastructure and temporary housing at the following sites, Lahaina Recreational Center, Maui Land and Pine, Land in Napili, and Front Street. And you guys have the totals? What's that? Okay, we'll add we'll add the total amounts um in the community report. Wait, where's the budget director? <laughs> okay, can you just explain? <clears throat> why the administration would need the flexibility of extending the lap state? Uh, a lot of that is dependent upon cash flow and the cash flow with regards to reimbursements that we get from the federal government and the money that we have to upfront as a state. So what we are asking for is consideration uh, to allow us, the state, to be able to use the major disaster fund to make payments on invoices coming forward in anticipation of federal reimbursements coming in and then funding the major disaster fund. So whatever we spend in this year that carries over into the next and what we get reimbursed for, we would continue to just work that cash flow issue so that we do not have to keep coming back to the legislature and asking for additional appropriations. Okay, so we did not include that in the in the, the amendments. We're noting that in the committee report. I think part of the concern is until we can see a, a plan that deals with the housing and the NCS, that we we may not be open right now to allowing the administration the extended lapse date until we can actually see where the how the cash flow is occurring. Any any other questions for Director? Okay, thank you. If not, uh, recommendation is to pass with the minutes. Here, before uh, Director leaves, Actually. can I ask mm -hmm. a question? Um, because this is the last day where, for the Senate, is looking at this measure in the public. I raised a question earlier. Um, the concern I had was, where did the funds go on contributions from our international partners, uh, our sister city relationship, more or less, um, from Korea, Japan, Taiwan, uh, or that was from Taipei? And you weren't clear where those funds went to. And reason I ask is that that's a contribution for a sister state relationship 
but it shouldn't go to a nonprofit organization. And so, but when we raise the question and the chair raised the question as well, you weren't sure where the monies are. So just just to ask. But so again. But yeah, a fair question, uh, Senator. So there was a, a communications that was sent out to to direct uh, contributions to the various nonprofit organizations doing charitable work around the disaster in the aftermath of 8-8. Uh, you know, if if it doesn't go through the state treasury, I, I really don't have any visibility. So we have reached out to the to the nonprofit agencies uh, to see if we can get an accounting of any international contributions that have well, been Well, we certainly did receive because we had pictures with the lieutenant governor like receiving that in, in the newspaper, receiving the check, you know. Um, and so when my, I met with the Taipei group who brought it to my attention, not talking about that contribution, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they asked, they did tell me that they contributed and I thanked them, but you know, we're still trying to find out where those dollars are. And that's going to help the state because when you transfer and monies of that amounts to the nonprofits, now you know that money is from the nonprofits, such as Hawaii Community Foundation, is going to go to another nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to include that in their tax refund. I mean, you know, their their tax uh, reports that they're going to probably not account for the, those contributions. But direct cash, like if it's a $500,000 contribution, I remember from one international um, contribution was pretty much, we better be serious about it because it's large amounts. So if we had three or four contributions, can you imagine we're talking about millions of dollars? And that's just my concern because we're in deep kimchi right now. And so wherever we can find, <laughs> should I say, uh, maybe bagong or something. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, that's, that's something that we need clear to be clear because your contributions that we all received were pretty much from the Americans. And so I'm just kind of curious because okay. these were sister state relationship contributions. Un understood, Senator. And again, we are trying to pull together a, a, an accounting yeah, that exists correct. outside of the state. You should send that, right now. our report then to the chair. We can do that. Yeah. Did we ever send contribution thank you letters to them? Um, there is only one contribution that actually went through this, the, the Treasury uh, because it was a check that was made specifically to the state of Hawaii, uh, and that was from American Samoa, and a thank you letter did go out to them. So you don't know where the contributions were addressed to then, the checks? The, uh, the contributions? Yeah, like when, so if Taipei paid 500000 or $300,000, do you know how they paid? I, I, it okay. did not go okay. through this. Yeah. 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 So my recollection was that you guys had referred them to Hawaii Community Foundation to make the check to. That was a, a decision that was made in order to expedite the expenditure of funds at so, the time. So is that the policy of the state from now on, that anytime somebody gives any entity, any tragedy, any event, the, the state's response is going to be donate to ACF. Um, I, I can say, I mean, this is uh, this what occurred at that point in time was something that we've never had in at least my tenure over here, or at least anything that I can remember. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that we need to take a look at going forward. Yeah, in I the don't event recall that, that. So you know, like yeah. even in the in the Puna incident or any of the, mm -hmm. I don't recall the state taking an official position on saying this is who you donate to. And, you know, for the most part, you know, government to government, uh, we don't really get like government to government donations per se. This is something that is but like, it, very unique. It wasn't just the government to government donations. The state was seen like everything being promoted was donate to HCF. That is correct. Yes. So is that a policy now from the administration that in any event, the it's going to be to donate to HCF? Um it, it is not a policy. Uh, I think as we go forward, it is something that we need to take a look at, whether it's 
a administrative policy or if it becomes statutory at some point in time, I think that is a decision and a conversation that we all need to have and with how, regards to international was, contributions. But I'm saying in the state's position in all contributions, the administration said donate to HCF. Uh, that was that was indicated, yes, uh, right after the aftermath of the 88. So is sure. that, that going to be the it, policy then? Uh, I am unaware of any discussions right now that how, how any did they policy get to that, is How did they get to that, hmm? that conclusion that that's where, because there's other, there's Aloha United Way, there's all these other. Sure. And I think that there were also contributions that were made directly to the American Red Cross, all different types of organizations when the, you know, not just, again, not just other governments, but individuals and large, uh, you know, large contributors. I think we all remember that there was a, a very large contribution that was made by uh, yeah. by an owner of an e-tail company. Uh, but again, the expediency of which funds can be expended uh through those types of organizations versus when a dollar when a dollar hits the state of hawaii when we accept it uh it is considered public funds and once that becomes public funds i get that we go through yeah, process. i get that but i've never i don't recall a, a time where government said this is who you donate to in this because at that point we there's no oversight on from government and so people ask us well how are these monies being spent Mm -hmm. who decides and then we have a lot of these expenses that are in this bill those monies were supposed to go directly to the recovery these projects in this bill are for the recovery but i don't see any income yeah. any match here from any nonprofit. understood it's something that we we definitely need to take a look at uh going forward as we reconcile expenses associated with the disaster because how much you have, do you have any total how much has been collected so far from I, I all I know is what has been reported in the press so far it could be as much as 175 million dollars to HCF and you know there was I believe 10 million dollars that was donated to the Oprah Dwayne the Rock Johnson fund there were multiple different funds and GoFundMe accounts and direct contributions that were made to the American Red Cross and all of these things that that uh, really, I guess, in the aftermath of the disaster, you know, there, there was a significant amount of financial resources that was flowing through the state through many different sources. Then uh, to follow up, perhaps you can have one if your staff regarding the international contributions, check to see if those monies went directly to the county. You know, maybe they did press releases giving it to the state well, on behalf, can, but you can yes. check. I mean, we can have other info briefings too. Yeah. So this, yeah. this doesn't have to be the last time we talk about it because I think there's still some unanswered questions I, we have yeah. the last week. And I think we should have a report from those entities like we can ask them to. Yeah. We can ask them to attend the uh, future. Thank you. Briefing. Thank you, Chair. So, thank you. I mean, you think that maybe there should be categories because I know like in the OPRA and, and ROCKS fund, they gave directly, they had them apply and gave it directly, whereas the ones that came from foreign countries or other governments, they gave a check directly to the, I mean, I guess to the foundation. So some of those are different because they were earmarked. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one we had no control of the ROCK and OPRA, but we certainly should have control of the others. Should I, the others. Yes, understood. And and again, this is this is uh, very much uncharted territory for us, and we're something that we need to take a look at again as we reconcile expenses, uh, because it is our intention to get a uh, an, a global view of all types of financial resources that has been dedicated to the disaster. Okay, and so so this the bill that the administration proposed. Going back to what happened yesterday, is this, are all the items in this bill requests from each department that said, this is how much we need? Yes, these okay. were items that were included in the, in HB 1800, yeah. which was the budget bill that we submitted back in December. Okay, but. Although there was an, there wasn't an omission on our part. It was just a typo. We forgot to include uh, the, I believe it was a consumer advocates uh, portion. 
but well, HHFTC asks from yeah, zero, 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 eight to two hundred thirty million. Yes, I think yeah. I was a little cross-eyed when I was typing up the bill. Yeah. Um, but my question is, if that's the case, going back to what we talked about yesterday, this is a this is a list from all the different departments. What's the plan that shows us that this is all justified? What's the overall plan? Because before we go ahead and approve two hundred forty million. We should at least see how it all fits in. What's the approach? What's the timeline on getting these things done? Versus just having each department say, "Give me how much you guys think you're going to need." Yes, and we will put together, you know, basically a comprehensive look at all of this this whole request, and uh, provide you with a an account by account and a department department breakdown on what we're doing for the disaster. I mean, it's just because of the constitutional deadline that we have to keep this vehicle alive. But I think most of us are quite uncomfortable without seeing how this all plays out. What's the plan? How it all in, how it's in, how is it integrated? What is the timelines, the outcomes? Mm -hmm. we, we quite, we're not quite sure. I understand. And, and the administration appreciates the willingness to move the vehicle along. So we might have to figure this out sooner rather than later. Understood. When you put when you put this, who put this bill together? BNF. Yes. So you did you guys ask the departments? We uh, well because this we went through the process of uh, putting together the budget bill through eighteen hundred uh, with you, individual. Can you explain the plan? Huh? Based on this dollar amount, can you explain how what the plan is uh, for two hundred forty million? Uh, for those. The details of which I don't have at this point in time, but I know that there was a multiple request associated with addressing wildfire related risks. Uh, there was an infusion of $184 million into the major disaster fund to continue covering costs associated with, uh, again, our portion and our share of reimbursements that we would, or our share of costs that are also being reimbursed by the federal government. Uh, and so there were a multitude of different requests inside there. There was additional requests also for DHS for additional uh, case manager workers so that they could continue working on, you know, individuals that were displaced by the disaster um, and a couple of other things too as well. well. They, but, just, they yeah. just paused because you went from 199 million when you thought was going to cost fiscal year 24 to now 550 million. So this is 240 million. And without a, yes. without a a real plan, how do we know it's going to triple? Yeah, understood uh, the concern, and that is something that we need to go back to the departments and start putting in uh, budgetary controls uh, related to individual departmental expenditures on the disaster going forward. So you cannot guarantee that this is going to be it. I think with the extreme amount, uh, the only thing that I can guarantee is that we would not exceed whatever you guys appropriate to us. Okay, but that just means emergency or proclamation moving money around to add to the 240. But that we would not exceed the appropriation ceiling. It would require- yeah, That's cutting in departments. It would other, require other us budget. to make adjustments within what was appropriated. So my question, uh, Director, is oh, when, when will checks be cut to these entities? Will there be a formal written request for the funds and a, some kind of contract showing how much it's going to cost and then the funds will be released? Um, I just, I, I guess, you know, to um, concur with Senator, with Chair De La Cruz on this is that if you guys don't have a plan in place, then how are we releasing the funds? Why are we releasing the funds? And who are we releasing funds to? Is it to the county of Maui? Or their contractors, whoever they are, can come and ask us for money? I, I just don't see you the process. I, I, I understand. Are you talking about the additional money that was put aside for the infrastructure? Uh, where that I'm talking about any funding that we are giving to yeah. to the Lahaina effort. So for for contracts that the state is the signatory for, uh, we would cut the check to those agencies, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to consolidate 
expenditures within the major disaster fund so that there wouldn't be multiple checks being cut from multiple different departments. Uh, with regards to any financial resources that the state will be providing to the county of Maui, we could work with them uh, in terms of uh, having them you know, reconcile and true up their expenditures and provide us with a uh, with a list of what they will be spending their money on, and we can release money uh, upon approval of that plan. Okay, this is really unfortunate because we have these deadlines that we have to, and we still have so many more questions. Um, I'm just afraid that if we don't move a vehicle along, we won't have some. We won't be able to separate the Maui expenses mm -hmm. from the budget. Did we not have an agreement that it should be the Budget director that cuts all the checks. I mean, rather than the different departments. No, so even, but even if we were to uh, put that in law, the governor has emergency powers, so he could just waive it. So that's where we're in this predicament where there are certain laws that are being waived through the emergency proc. So we have very little control unless it's a constitutional issue. Correct, but at least the public would know that we were trying to figure out how the control is going to be. Yeah. And if they can agree to let us know that, you know, it'll come through you so that we know when the expenditures are made and if they're going to have to come back and ask us for more money. And we won't know that if every different department is cutting checks and you, go, I don't know how you guys would keep track of it. It's been a challenge. Okay, well, we can, we can add to the, um, to the language of the bill asking for reporting and that the BNF director provide a, a timeline and process of how bills are being paid. I'd be satisfied with that. So that's just further amending. Mm -hmm. But like, it's just unfortunate because we have to pass this. We have a deadline uh, but, and we need some vehicle. The governor's message and other items are, are coming down. Correct. So what we can do is when those governor, when the additional government governor's message comes down to the ledge, we can have info briefings on that. That way we can get a better understanding. The the first committee, uh, this didn't come straight to WAM. So the, I'm not sure if the first committee went through each item with the departments to ask mm -hmm. if those expenses were justified. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to continue this. It's not yes, to you, but yes, you know we're we're in a position that's being broadcast publicly. Yeah, and we're in a predicament that the governor is not even here, and we're in a predicament that we gotta pass something as a vehicle. He talk about this humanitarian money. I still don't have an idea. Of when this humanitarian Ohana fund came in, because the reason why I was we was told why the money went to the other entity is because at the time we didn't have an avenue to give the funds. So that means the Ohana uh, fund came in after they started giving the money to the entities that couldn't receive it. That's what I wanted, Blake. That's what I wanted the governor. That's what I want you guys to look at, because he said. Soon after the fire, this humanitarian effort was going through. And I don't want to call the governor a liar, right? But he misleading the public. But that funds was not, and that Ohana thing was not put in place. Because Blake said it and you said it. We didn't have an avenue to put the funds into some place that could be given. That's the reason why the recommendation was to go to that other organization. That's the reason why they told Japan or whoever to write the check to them because we didn't have this fund. So I need to get clarification because I'm not comfortable. That's not, no, but that's not in this bill. Yeah, but I understand. But you still have an answer how the whole fund came in with the foreign money they're talking about coming in. Yeah. And if it, all of that came in, then the money right there would have been a, uh, justified in changing because I heard there was $480 million that was given to, to them because we didn't receive it from the state. So we can have an info briefing. Yeah. When the governor's message comes down, we can do an additional briefing so that members can continue to ask questions. Well, I understand. You're, no, you're right. You're right in the sense where the governor announced the Wanohana fund in November. It was not part of the administrative package. 
it was it was not part of the official GM. It was part of an amendment that the AG was going to propose, which we did not have time to bet. So we'll, when the GM comes down, we'll have a, a much longer, thorough info briefing so that we can ask questions about the one on one. Right. I'm uh, sorry, Chair. I'm just saying this is because the public needs to know that we're putting our committee and our WAM chair and our vice chair in a predicament and making them get the heat. The governor should have been here. Should have been here. Somebody else should be here from his office. And the governor is a no-show. That's the thing we try to say because there's nobody accountable but this committee and, and our chair. And that's the part that I'm, I'm not very happy with. Thank you. And not, not, not your fault. I'm just sharing with you. I don't have no PDK with you. I just share it with you to let you know my, my issue is with the governor. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Okay, Chair's going to recommend. Um, I guess this is unusual if, if I do this too, but I'm going to um, recommend passing with reservations. So. If, if you can do a roll call vote. Okay. Okay. S amendments. SB 3068, passed with amendments. Uh, chair votes with reservation. Vice chair votes with reservation. Senator Aquino. Oh, reservations. Uh, Senator DeCoy. Reservations. Senator Hashimoto. Aye. Senator Inoue. Reservations. Senator Kanuha. Reservations. Senator Kidani. Reservations. Senator Kim. Reservations. Senator Lee. Reservations. Senator Wakai. Reservations. Senator Favela. Reservations. Okay. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. We're going to take a recess because we have a delayed um, agenda with Judiciary. So recess. Okay, calling the Joint Committee of Ways and Means and Judiciary to order this is a 1031 agenda. So members, we're going to take the very last item first, because that way JDC can take the lead on the rest. So this is SB 3327. Uh, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not Chair Motsai. Mm -hmm. SB 3327, all members present. Anyone on, uh, to pass? Mm -hmm. No, pass as is. Oh, they pass on amended. All members present. Anyone voting aye? I mean, voting no. Anyone with reservation? Recommendation adopted. <laughs> she was up late trying to figure out the CIP for the height. <laughs> oh, oh, JDC, uh, or JDC members, recommendation to say any questions or concerns? If not, Senator Gabbard. Aye. Thank you. Next item, SB 2617. Recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? SB 2617, pass an amendment. All members present, anyone voting no, anyone with uh, reservations, recommendation adopted. Uh, JDC members, same recommendation on 2617. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none, Senator Gabbard. Members present, are there any doubles with the Hearing none, as it passed. Thank you. Next item, SB 2913. Recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not chair vote side. Okay. Senate Bill 2913 has an amended. And all members present, anyone voting no with reservation, recommendation adopted. JDC members, same recommendation on SB 2913. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Gabbard. Are there any no votes or reservations? Any amendments? Next item, SB 2922. Uh, recommendation is to pass with amendments and adopt the LRB tech amendments and uh, getting approval from the subject matter chair. Changing all references from shareholder backed offsets to shareholder backed contributions, removing references to the funding of litigation and settlements, 
noting that shareholder contributions may be part of utility capitaliz capitalization on page two, clarifying the uses for recovery costs on page six, removing reference to catastrophic wildfire on page nine, allowing scrutinized funds to be utilized if they are the most cost-effective method to rate payer on page 11, clarifying plan requirements that the utility must provide to the PUC prior to accessing secur securitized capital on pages 11 to 13, inserting a time of 180 days for the PUC and removing references to the issuance of a resolution on page 14, clarifying that authorization of costs or expenses by the PUC does not constitute a liability to the state on page 18, clarifying that the 120 day of time frame begins once the PUC determines the application is complete on page 19, inserting a new subsection N on page 21 to read the commission is prohibited from approving a financing order if the plan provided under subsection C3 precludes a subsequent restructuring of the public utility that contemplates the separation of energy generation and delivery functions and a system of enhanced local governance and accountability, which may include alternative models of public ownership, creating a restriction on accessing securitized capital shall only be available to utilities whose bond rating is below investment grade on page 30, 36, inserting a provision that access to securitized Funds shall be limited to utilities whose bond rating is below investment grade and inserting a sunset date of June 30, uh, 2030. And we'll let the committee report reflect that while this may present challenges to a utility, the committee believes further discussion is warranted and committee recognizes that concerns exist regarding an alternate models of ownership for utilities as referenced in this bill. In 2019, DBED published a study on alternate mo models of ownership, including cooperatives in the state of Hawaii, which noted that the regulatory reform may be a better option to achieve state energy goals. In the interest of this further discussion, the committee encourages a reevaluation of the section of this section as the bill progresses. And we'll leave it a uh, has already a defective date. Unfortunately, um, on this time frame, you had a 180 day time frame in one place and 120 day time frame in another. Is that the same? Is that supposed to be the same number? I think it's uh, two different sections. With uh, recess. Okay. Any further discussion on SB 2922? Um, I'm going to be voting with reservations, but I really do appreciate all of your amendments. It looks like you are really taking care of great payers, but um, until I read all the amendments, I'm going to be voting with reservations. Okay. Okay, no further discussion. Chair. Yeah, Chair. Um, so since this is outlined as Catastrophic Wildfire Securitization Act, uh, but it has nothing to do, this has to do with the utilities but this doesn't carry over yet to other utilities, such as geothermal, if something happens. Mm -hmm. well, no, but not it, a, it's not, no, yeah, because not that's not wildfire yet. Well, well they're not a, geothermal company is not a utility. Okay, okay. Because you're gonna have distribution Cute. and generation. And generation. Yeah. Any further discussion? If not, share both sides. SB 2922, uh, passed with amendments, anyone voting no, anyone with reservation, recommendation adopted. Same recommendation for JC members. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Any no votes for noting the reservations for reservations? Any no votes for reservations? Besides, measure passes. Thank you. Next item, SB 3050, recommendation is to pass with amendments uh, effecting the date upon approval. Any discussion? Not sure, both side. SB 3050. I'll pass with amendments on members present. Anyone voting no? Any reservation, recommendation adopted? Same recommendation for JDC. Uh, questions or concerns? Seeing none. Uh, Senator Gallo. Any reservations or no votes? Hearing none, the measure passes. Thank you. Next item, SB 3142. Recommendation is to pass with amendments. Adopting LRB. Any discussion? Not sure what's side. Senate Bill 3142 passed with amendments. All members present. Anyone voting no with reservation? Recommendation adopted. Uh, for JDC members, same recommendation. No questions or concerns? Seeing none, uh, Vice Chair. Any no votes or reservations? 
Hear none, Measure passes. Thank you. Next item, SB 3234, recommendations to pass as is any discussion. Um, yes. So I'm going to be voting with reservation simply because it, this, this doesn't cover commercial property and lava zones one and two, which HPIA was supposed to cover initially. So um, I was hoping that this bill, as it moves forward, will fix that loophole. Okay, we can add that to the committee report. That would be wonderful. And then we will also add to the the committee report amendments proposed by Dotex. Okay. Any yes. further discussion? No, thank you. You know what? We have to meet the midnight deadline. So if no, I, I understand. I understand. Minutes, we're not going to get the bills back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Oh, no, okay. okay. SB 3234, pass an amended. All members present. Anyone voting? No. Anyone voting with reservation? Recommendation adopted. As is. So, same recommendation as is on SB 3234 for JDC members. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none, Senator Gabbard. Any reservations or no votes? Reservations. So, oh, only because of it's not an actual bill, but I do appreciate it being part of the committee report. Thank you. For fixing it as it moves forward. Measure passes. Thank you. And I think this is the last uh, WAM item before crossover. <laughs> um, <laughs> SB 3344, recommendation is to pass with amendments, uh, getting prior concurrence, we're adopting LRB tech amendments, inserting a definition for eligible claims on page four, clarifying that the requirements of the plan to be submitted by the utility prior to accessing the wildfire relief fund, inserting provisions to allow the PUC to determine timelines and access on pages 17 through 19, inserting a provision that the state supplemental contribution shall not exceed the largest contribution paid by another entity on page 24, providing that utility contributions may be recovered from customers and rates provided that an equal share is recovered from the sh from shareholder back offsets on page 25, and clarifying that should total supplemental payments be insufficient to meet the administrator's required amount, the state may loan an amount up to the depletion percentage dictated in section 16D of the measure on page 26. And we'll let the committee report reflect that we recognize that concerns regarding requirements to the separate generation from transition, transmission and distribution within the electric utility system. This separation has seen mixed results for ratepayers in other states, but believes that idea warrants further discussion as the bill progresses. Any discussion? Oh, leave me, leave me. Yeah, 2040. Good, thanks. Okay, Chair Bullside. Okay, SB 3344, passed with amendments. All members present, anyone voting no? With reservation, recommendation adopted. GDC members, same recommendation. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Gabbard. Any reservations or no votes? Okay, none as your passes. Okay, next bill is SB 2443. This establishes the Automated Speed Enforcement System Program for 10 school zones. Recommendation here is to pass. Uh, with amendments, we'd like to match the language that is used in the photo red light imaging detector system, which is HRS sections 291J6 and J7, including amendments made in 2022 that deleted the language being proposed here. Delete the language about rebutting the citation section six on pages nine and 10 and insert language from the red light running law subsection F of section 291J, which said, which state that the procedures in the traffic citation chapter, chapter 291D apply. Two, that is a defense that the motor vehicle was stolen as documented by a police report. And three, that reference to the person's commission of the infraction shall be interpreted to mean commission of the infraction. The language would be inserted at the end of section five on page nine. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Gabbard for the vote. The recommendations to pass SB 2443 with amendments for JDC. Any reservations? Reservations. I, I don't like the idea of um, automatically ticketing people who are running late for work. Okay. Measure passes. No vote. Oh, sorry. No vote for Senator Roth. Well. Measure passes. Uh, ways and means same recommendation. I'm sure. SB 2443, uh, pass with amendments. All members present. Anyone voting no? Anyone with reservations? Reservation for Kim. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. Recommendation adopts. 
Uh, next up is SB 2520 relating to the defense of state employees requires a state to defend professionally licensed or certified state employees from civil actions when the employee was acting within the scope of their employment. Clarifies that the employee may employ their own attorney. Requires that if the state refuses to defend a state employee from civil actions on certain grounds, the attorney general shall first work with the employee to amicably transfer representation to replacement counsel. Our recommendation here is to pass with an amendment require uh, proposed by the uh, Hawaii, uh, Hawaii Government Employees Association, require the attorney general to file a motion, require the attorney general to file a motion in order to withdraw as counsel, regardless of whether the attorney general determines that such a motion is required. We do have prior concurrence from Senator Aquino. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Gabbard for vote. The JDC SB 2520, passing with amendments, any reservations or no votes? Hearing none, the measure passes. Same recommendation, ways and means. Say Bill 2520, passed with amendments. Any members voting no? With reservation, recommendation adopted. Okay, next up is SB 2615. It's authorized counties to adopt labor standards that include but are not limited to standards for living wages, benefits, and requirements and participation in state approved apprenticeship programs. Our recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? See none, Vice Chair. Right. On SB 2615, as is, any reservations or no votes? Hearing none, the measure passes. Same, same recommendation, ways and means. The same recommendation. Uh, any reservations? Any with no votes, objections? Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. Next up is SB 2990. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, 2919 expands the zoning powers of counties, expands the scope of the transient accommodation, accommodation tax law to include certain shelters and vehicles and sleeping accommodations. Uh, recommendation on 2919. Okay, this is really cool. So one, one amendment at DOE taxes request will make section three regarding changes to the definition using the transient accommodation taxes effective on January 1st, 2025. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Recommendations to pass SB 2919 with amendments. Any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. No, same recommendation, Ms. Okay. Uh, pass with amendments. Uh, any objections? Any reservations? Recommendation adopted. Okay, thanks. Next up is SB 3237, facilitates the control and eradication of invasive species and pests. Uh, recommendation here is to pass with the delayed effective date of April 14, 2112, and technical amendments. Uh, if it's okay with you, Chair, I'd like to also add some uh, committee report language saying that the Attorney General and Hawaii Government Employees Association raised legitimate concerns that will have to be addressed if this bill is to pass. Okay. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair for the vote. Recommendation on SB 3237 is a pass with amendments. Any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Please, amend the same recommendation. Uh, all members, uh, Senate, uh, Senate Bill 3237. Any objections? No. Any reservations? Reservations. Okay. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you.